Hey everybody, it's Carol with Refunction Crafts and today I'm going to be altering this box. Um, I got this at a thrift store the other day and I thought, you know, I really like the octagon shape of it. Or whatever it is. I don't know that that's octagon. I don't remember. Anyway. I like the shape of this box and I, I had already painted it white so I thought you know I've been putting stuff together to alter it and I want to go ahead and do that today for you guys. Um, you know how much I love altering boxes so um, particularly old special boxes you know that have a different shape or a different look. The, one of the other boxes that I'm looking to alter soon is this one, which my friend Deanna sent me um, some happy mail in, and I can't wait to alter this one. This one I, I need to put some more thought into, though, because there's some things I want to do to this. This, I think I have decided, is going to be my uh, memory box for my mom and you know how I was gonna make a journal I think I've decided instead of a journal and I may do both actually I think I'm gonna use that snippet roll that I made with the photo of my mother's picture um, I think I'm going to use that on top of this because that snippet fits perfectly now I've already cut that snippet but it's okay because I just kinda cut it in between sections and um, I can put it back together exactly how I did it so that's what I think I'm going to do because I, I really I really want to use the entire snippet and the entire thing wouldn't fit on a journal so it's gonna go on that box um, okay so first things first let me read a nice inspirational quote and today when I looked up inspirational quotes I put uh, a, a extra wording in there to say inspirational quotes refresh the soul and so this is one that came up and I thought it was it was really beautiful um, and and this is something that I need I need to start refreshing my soul and and getting myself in a more positive place so um, this one says, to nourish your soul is to cherish and feed it with mindfulness, positive thinking, and intentional self-care. Self-care, I'm going to put that in quotes. Um, nourishing your soul means to know yourself deeply and give yourself unconditional love. This love and joy helps you grow, maintain spiritual health, and give more freely to others. And again, it's that the, the thing that I keep coming back to, if we don't take care of ourselves, we can't take care of anybody else. Um, and sometimes we find that we're taking care of everybody else and not ourselves. Um, and I am absolutely guilty of this. I've done it my whole life. And I believe in my soul that that is one of the reasons that God put me on this earth was to um, to help other people and so uh, that's what I do and I love doing it I love taking care of other people I love um, I just love nurturing um, other people so but but again I'm finding it a little more difficult these days to nurture others um, because I'm not I'm not paying much attention to myself so I'm gonna start trying to do a little bit more of that and nurturing my soul and um, you know making sure that that I have joy in my heart um, and I think we all should do should do that and and really take care of yourselves you guys because you matter um, just as much as everyone else does and so please 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 take care of yourselves Okay, so in this, in this project today, um, I'm going to remind you all too, don't forget to go shopping in my Etsy shop. Um, I guess March seems to have been that month that people are maybe trying to save a little bit of money because it's the, the sales in my Etsy shop have been down a little bit. Part of that is probably because I don't have as many new items in my shop 
as I would like to have right now. And I am working on that. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to start making some stuff that I'm not doing videos on. Um, and what I'll do is I'll just, as I make them, I'll show them to you guys in my videos as finished items. But I may not be doing everything in a video. So, um, because that's the only way I can get some stuff in my shop without, you know, taking too much time out in the process by making videos and uploading and all that stuff. In the meantime, I'll continue to make lots of videos. Um, but I'm going to try and... and uh, balance it out a little bit so okay so with this box and and don't forget I also have two giveaways in my Etsy shop one for those who spend tw up to um, spend $25 or more and those who spend $50 or more so and I've got pretty decent prizes for you guys um, in those giveaways so um, head on over to my Etsy shop see if there's anything that you'd like to to have in there and I'm going to be putting some uh, some more of my my little bumblebees which are these little guys look at how beautiful they are you guys I'm going to try and use one in this project today if it works out but these are the ones that I added resin to and they really just came out absolutely gorgeous and Robin to my friend Robin I want you to know this is the one that I'm going to be sending you to replace the one that I already sent you. So I'm going to do that. And so that's another way that I try to, um, to be mindful of others. This, uh, Robin ordered a bumblebee, which was one of my, just my standard paper bumblebees. I didn't have any resin at the time and I was just selling them I only had one in my shop actually and I was just selling it as a paper bumblebee but once I did these ones with the resin I kind of felt like Robin got gypped a little bit and I didn't like that and it really really was bothering me so um, Robin this is the one that I'm going to be sending you I'm going to put it back in its baggie and um, I, I will get it out to you. It may not be this week, but by next week I'll try and, and mail this bumblebee. And I want you to use the other one that you got. It's still usable. It's still a great little bumblebee, but I want you to have one of the new and improved ones. So <clears throat> that's what I'm going to do for Robin. I will be using some of my resin today. And I'm going to be using this. It's called Let's Resin, and it's UV Resin. And I will put the link to this product in my um, description menu below. Now, the good thing with this is it came with two bottles of resin, which each is 100 grams. And that's a good amount of resin. Um, and it also, it was a kit. It came with this black light, which works amazing. And um, so with this resin, you can use the black light or you can use the sunlight. So today I'm going to show you guys how I use the black light because in most of my videos, I, I just do the sunlight method because I prefer to put them out in the sun. Today is not a very sunny day in my neighborhood. Um, it's kind of rainy today, so we're going to use the black light, which is, I would have done that anyway because I want to show you guys that process as well and show you how it cures under the black light. So the first thing we'll be doing is resining one of these images that I want to put on this box. The thing I need to determine, I think what I'm going to do, I was planning on putting the image on the top, but I'm starting to think that maybe what I'd like to do is just put it um, on, the, on the side here. Look at all my goodies. On the side here, um, just in, you know, like that and then um, embellish around it so I think that's what I'm gonna do because I have a lot that I want to put on the top of this lid so with that said if I put this on there then I'm really limited as to how I can arrange the floral uh, piece that I want to put on this and I don't want to do that um, but the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys using my resin. I've got these pick these images and I just need to decide which one of these I want to use on this box. Now if I was going to use this one, 
um, you can see that it's it's pretty small and it would actually go nicely on the top but if I was going to do that, I think I would want to put it with some sort of a frame around it, and I just don't have one. I don't have a, I would want a round frame, and I don't have a round frame that I could put around this. Now, what I can do, I love this image so much. It's one of my favorites. Look at how beautiful she is. Um, this one would go nicely with the box because it's in the right colors and everything. Um, and it would really, really look nice on here. But I'm debating on whether I want to go with a person or something like this that's kind of, um, you know, it's kind of a bird mo motif. motif. Um, so I don't know. And then I've got these images, which are equally beautiful. I love this one. She's just gorgeous. But the flowers in this one really don't go with what I'm going to be putting on this box. So I think I'm going to put her aside. This little girl is just adorable. And really, I can do anything with her. And I can do anything with her. Um... I think I'm going to use this one, though. Um, gosh, I'm really torn. I may end up using both of these. Let's see here. We're going to take this one, and I'm going to use... Let's see. Let's just use my little glue can. And I need to get... A pencil so let's see I think I had one right here somewhere yes I do oh and just to show you guys I'm gonna be putting these in my shop too these are this is a pencil and this is one that Jeff made um, he hand turned it it's resin that he hand turned on his lathe and these resin blanks are some that I got from my friend Sherry she sent me a whole box full of these blanks and then this is another blank that she sent me this one is a is a pen and look at how beautiful that is whoopsie sorry you guys I need to stand up so I can get closer to the camera there we go so look at how pretty that is and then here's the other one and he used two different blanks on this one just to make it a little bit different so um, this is a pencil, this one's a pen, and so I will be putting both of these in my shop, but for today, since I've got this pencil right here, I'm going to use it to uh, round the corners on this image. So I'm just going to take it and draw just like that. Trying to make sure I get them even. Whoops. Actually, this would have been the right way to do this. Put this in the center and go like that. And like that. I guess I need to get the pencil out a little bit better. Okay, and I'm going to redraw this one and do the same thing. There we go. And that way I think I'll get more even uh, cuts. So we'll try and round this out nicely with the edges. And I'm just going inside, whoopsie, I'm going inside the pencil lines that I drew. Trying to make sure there's kind of no little point on the edge. It's hard to see this because the background is white. Here, so I'm having trouble seeing the 
edges of this against that white background. Okay, so that's what we've got. And now I can take it, looking at it this way, and I can take these edges and round them out a little bit better than they are right now. Just taking the little edges off. I'm not very good at getting a good oval shape on things. I'm not the best at really eyeballing that sort of thing. And this looks like it needs to... the way that end looks and I think I'm going to come down just a little bit more on this end trying to get the rounding to come to the center like that that's better so there we go all sort of rounded out now, there will be something going around the edges of this, too, so keep in mind when you're cutting something like this out, you're probably going to trim it out around the edges, and so it's not really going to matter if you are off just a smidge because you're not going to see it. <clears throat> so what I need to do is I need to determine what I'm going to use to sort of trim this out on the edges, too. But the first thing that I'm going to do, we're going to take our resin, do not shake this up before you use it because if you do that, you're going to end up with a whole bunch of bubbles everywhere. I'm going to use this little wooden piece to set this on top of. And I'm just going to I'm get a tongue depressor here too. Tongue depressor works good to help spread your resin around once you get it on here. You want to kind of take your edges so that they're not it's not going to uh, fall over the edges. And we want to do this sort of as quickly as we can. This is going to protect this image. Now I print my images on an inkjet printer. When you're using an inkjet jet printer, you don't want to use something like triple thick um, to protect your images because triple thick is going to cause your colors to bleed and everything will just kind of go into itself, if you know what I mean. Your, your lines are not going to be crisp in your images. Your detail will not be crisp. It'll all be kind of um, blurred, in a sense. So I'm just covering this entire piece of paper, and this is cardstock that I'm using. And I want to get this under the black light before it starts to really uh, bend and, and change shape. Because you can see already it wants to kind of bow a little bit. So I'm going to do like this. Get it as flat as I can. And as soon as I get it under that black light, it's going to start to cure. I need a little bit more resin on the top of this, though. I feel like it's not quite thick enough. And this resin really is like a self self leveling. So if you're using a thicker um, layer of resin on whatever it is you're doing, 
it's it's going to self level which means that if your piece is a little bit unlevel the resin should help to make it level um, so it'll it'll pool in the places where it's low and so you'll get a, a little bit more even look okay so I'm going to put my tongue depressor aside there and I have a little bit of resin on this piece and I don't want this to stick to it I've got this little heart we're just going to put it on this heart and so I'm going to turn on here's my little black light I'm going to turn that on and I'm just going to pop that right under there and get it started curing and that's all there is to it um, that light is covering the entire image this is a small black light so um, it's covering the whole thing and I'm trying to hold this down sort of on these edges for a minute so that it will stay a little bit more flat and as it cures it'll hold it in place and it's already starting to harden it's nice and shiny and beautiful you don't want to touch the top of this um, I got a little tiny bit of a fingerprint on one edge but that's okay we want it a little longer than that, not long enough. Um, that's okay if you get a little bit on the edge that you're going to be covering up with lace or whatever um, trim you're going to put on it. So, do, 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 do. so I think I held that down enough. Okay. It's only going to take a few minutes, you guys, but I, you do want to make sure that it's completely cured. You want to, after you get it out from under the black light, you still don't want to touch the top of it until it is completely cooled um, so that you can't put fingerprints on it because if it's not completely cu cooled and cured, you're going to have fingerprints all over it and it's not going to look good. However, if you do that and you accidentally get some fingerprints on it, just take it back to the workbench put some more resin over it, put it back under the black light, and you've gotten rid of those fingerprints. So, and the light is off. And here is our image. And you can see it's nice and shiny. It's very stiff. It's a little bit cupped, as you can see. You can see it there, but that's okay. I'll still be able to use it and I'll be able to work with it. So I'm not concerned about that little bit of cupping that happened. Now that's the thing with paper. You know, if you don't get it to cure right away and that paper starts to cup like that, you're going to be stuck with that. And I guess I probably didn't hold it down quite long enough to get it to stay flat. And if I pull it too hard, it's going to get a crack in it. So, this is a thing that you, you learn over time that, you know, how to work with it and how to get it to, to do what you want it to do. Now, another thing that I could do, we're going to get another image. Let's see. Hold on just a minute, you guys. I'm going to go get something else. Okay, <clears throat> I'm going to take this image. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to find, let's see, I've got, that's probably going to be too tall, I'm thinking. Maybe not. Uh, yeah, maybe not. That should be actually okay. Whoops. Dug on it. I went and got resin over these other popsicle sticks. Okay. Um, so I'm going to put this right on top of here. And I'm going to lay a couple of tongue depressors on here just like that and in fact you know what I'm gonna do one better I'm gonna sorry I've got this other one in my mouth I'm gonna take this 
and I'm going to glue this down. And that's going to hold that picture completely flat. But what I did was I sort of covered up part of the image that I want to use. Let's try this again. Ugh. We're going to get rid of that popsicle stick. And I'm just going to warm up this glue real quick just to kind of flatten it out. We're going to put some glue on another popsicle stick and try this again. And I want it right there. I'm just going to press it down real good. Okay, and now we'll take this one and do it the same thing on the other side. You don't really need as much glue as I've put on this popsicle stick, but... And any strings of glue that cross that, you need to make sure you get rid of those. And I'm going to use my nippers and I'm going to cut this piece I'm just going to break it like that. I've got a straight edge there and I've got a straight edge there. So I'm just going to take a little bit of glue, put it on this one, and I'm going to pop it right there, holding that edge down. And then when I'm done with this, I'm going to be able to just pop these off. and um, cut out what I'm going to cover with the resin. We're just trying this. This is something I haven't tried before, you guys. So we're just gonna try this. And what I wanna do is I'm just gonna cover her um, from edge to edge. So I'm gonna try and do this as nicely as I can around the edges. And if there's any little bits that I need to trim off, I can do that. Um, the resin that I'm putting on here is such a thin amount that it's very forgiving and you can cut on it and it will be just fine. So we're just trying something new here. I just happened to think of this while I was looking for the image and I thought, you know what, that might be a fun thing to be able to do because then we're just taking the image Part. And in fact, I'm going to go a little bit outside the edge on some of this um, and do it that way. But I do want to try and do this as quickly as I can because I don't want it to soak through the paper before I've had a chance to cure the resin. So. I'm just trying to do this as quickly as I can, which obviously is not real quickly. Making sure that I fill in all the little holes, if there's any bubbles, you need to look at it really well and make sure you don't have any spots that you've missed because it's easy to miss it if you don't look at it and kind of uh, wave it back and forth under the light so you can see that every little bit of this shines before you put it under that uh, black light because I'm telling you, you guys, um, the black light, the, the curing process happens very, very, very quickly. And the second you pop that in the sunlight or under the black light, it starts to cure and harden. And you've missed your opportunity at that point to to fix it but you can always go back you can add resin again into those spots that you missed but you're gonna have to cover the entire image again 
So I'm looking at this and I'm waving it under the light and I can see that I got resin absolutely everywhere. The other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little toothpick and I'm going to look this over and if I see any little tiny teeny tiny air bubbles in there I'm going to take my toothpick and I'm just going to sort of pop those bubbles. Let me stand up and get a little closer to the camera here. I'm just going to, I'm waving it around and as long as I don't have this under the black light it's not curing. It will not cure just under um, the lights in your house. So just know that. You have to have UV light. So it has to be either sunlight or a black light. Okay, so I think I've got that just the way I want it. And it's nice and flat. And I'm going to put it under the black light here, just like that, and turn it on. And again, it's only going to take a few minutes and we will have a nice little image that we can cut out. So I'm going to just push that back a little bit, move these out of the way because I don't need them anymore. And put this one, see now this one I can, I can touch now. almost feels like it could use a little more curing time, but um, I'll put it under the black light again before we are done with all of this, just to make sure. All right, put those aside. Now we need to see what we're going to do to our box. I've got all kinds of embellishments of course we're not going to use all of them, um, but I wanted to make sure that I had lots of things that I could use. I've got laces, uh, I've got this gorgeous, gorgeous applique that I got from my friend Deanna. Isn't that beautiful? That's my favorite one. And I've got some another applique, I've got some ribbons of different sorts, I've got this piece that I could use. That's the top, which is gorgeous. I've been waiting for the right project for this. I don't know that this is going to fit on here right, so I probably won't use that. I have this beautiful bow that I got from uh, Gail over at Fava of Four, and these I got from Deanna Grooms. Um, a lot of these bits and pieces. I got this thick lace um, in Happy Mail. And Deanna sent me this, which is some beautiful sequined trim. And look at this beautiful lace. I know I've shown you guys this before. Deanna sent me that in her recent Happy Mail. I've got this bit as well, which is absolutely gorgeous trim. It's a embroidered trim. And then I've got some of my rolled roses here that I've made. Lots of rolled roses. Lots and lots of rolled roses. And then I've also got the blue ones that I showed you guys in my last video. This is some double ruffled trim. And there we go. So we have lots of goodies to use on this box and let's see so I want to figure out what I'm going to do to the top of the box and what I was thinking was maybe I could use this and I don't know if I'm going to be able to push that down and glue it down or not I want to put this other one on the black light a little bit longer because that really did cup a lot. It's still a little bit pliable though and I'm thinking 
I might be able to glue the edges down just enough to get it to, to hold, but in order to do that, I think I might have to uh, use my um, Starbond glue. So we're just going to go for it here. We're going to give this a shot. I just feel like as soon as I put this down, that's it for it. That's my last chance. <laughs> so I just want to be absolutely, totally sure that this is what I want to do. I wanted to, ah, I don't know you guys. I'm thinking I'm going to use this on the side of the box. Here's the thing. I'm thinking, let's see, where's the back? This seam is where I'm going to have the back of the box. So, I'm going to make this the front. And if I put this like right here, even though it's cupped a little bit, I think I can get that down enough using my... Starbond glue. Let's first put some on the bottom. So we've got that glue there. I'm going to spray this with my accelerator and I'm going to stand up here and center this right there. And I'm just going to hold it down gently until that middle section stays. And I can take and I can leave this the way it is now. As you can see, it's kind of lifted on the edges. I could leave that like that and just embellish around it and it looks beautiful. It, it looks gorgeous. And with the right embellishments around it, I'm trying to find something, not something that I'm going to use right now, but uh, let's see. Well, I mean, even if we're taking like some some flowers and stuff, I mean, they're gonna they're gonna go like this, and and you're gonna you've got your your coverage. You know, depending on which flowers you're gonna use. I made this one this morning. I really really love the way it turned out. But something like that is gonna cover a whole edge. Um, but I still want to try this. I want to see if I can just gently coax that down. I, that's really what I want to do. I want to get it stuck on all edges. So we're going to just go for it here. We're going to put some Starbond along the whole edge of this image and I'm making sure I get plenty on there and that I know it's gone all the way around and then I'm going to press that down and spray it So I got that edge down, and that's okay. I did pull up a little bit of the paint right there, but that's okay because that's going to get covered up. Not worried at all about that. Ugh, see, I got glue right there. Okay, got that on there. Two squirts, press, and hold. And I am going to stick my fingers to this. I just know it. I can feel it.
just like that. <laughs> okay. There. Now, I am going to take and get some more of this glue on here. I'm going to do a little bit more work with that to make sure I've got this little image completely stuck down. And I have got a ton of super glue on my fingers right now, which is not good because I don't want to stick to these toothpicks. Before we finish this, I think I'm going to have to go use some of my super glue remover to get this off my fingers. Get another toothpick and press this in both those spots. Trying to figure out how I can use one hand to press them down and another hand. Goodness gracious! That's not going to work. Just like that. <laughs> and we're going to hope the accelerator didn't already take. It did. Okay, good enough. We're going to leave it at that, you guys. I'm going to put my baggie back on top of my glue. I'm going to go get this glue off my fingers real quick and I will be right back. Okay, I didn't get all of the glue off of my hands, but I got the majority of it off. I can clean the rest off later. I have this great stuff that uh, helps to remove glue from surfaces and does an amazing job on getting super glue off of your hands. So let's get rid of that now. So now we're going to be using our glue gun. So I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on this. I'm going to stand up to do this so that I can see what it is I'm doing so that I can get this on here straight. And we're just going to go along the edge of this picture, covering up any spots where I might have gotten a little bit of glue on the outside edges of this photograph. That's why I say if you get a little bit of glue on stuff, don't worry about it. It's almost always fixable. Now there are times when I've gotten it on there and it just is not fixable because I've gotten too much onto whatever it is that I'm trying to cover. And it's just impossible to make it look right. I need to get that cord out of the way of my glue gun. Get my little pencil out of the way so I don't ruin that before I even get a chance to put it in my shop. And just so you guys know, that is the only time I ever used that pencil, so it's still a full, a full lead. And I like this trim. It's that sequined trim that Deanna sent me, and it really makes a nice uh, trim for this photo trying not to get too much in the way of glue strings around this so they don't land on the middle of the 
image although I can get it off a little easier now that it's covered in the resin and let me get my scissors and snip this I think I'm gonna go I want to snip this one little piece off here because it's sticking out and then I think I'll snip this right about there get some glue on there you want to get enough glue on there so that you're gluing down those end sequins and they don't pop off there we go so there's our image it looks beautiful it went on there nicely and you can see there's not a bunch of fingerprints or glue marks or anything on it so I'm really super happy with the way that worked out it was a little bit of work but that's okay you know we got to put some work and some elbow grease into some of these projects <laughs> um, okay so now maybe I should go with my other trim that I wanted to use on this because it's a similar trim it's not the same trim this is a different one it's got like these little pointy edges on it that might be really pretty going across the bottom of this look at how lovely that looks I like that so that's probably what we'll put on the bottom and in fact I should put that on before I start doing any more embellishing I'm gonna start sort of in the middle of it because I want this piece to go to the back so let me get that around there okay so this is about where I want to start gluing this on we're just gonna make it so that the little points just go to the bottom of this box here and that makes it easier to get an even an even glue when you're putting it on let's go this way first because we want to get to the end of this and not waste any of our trim and hopefully I'm not sticking my head in the camera I think I'm getting my camera, my uh, yeah, my camera location a little bit better these days. I think I've got it almost figured out, so that you guys can see a little bit better what I'm doing, and I can still see what I'm doing, <laughs> and we're all going to be happy. <laughs> I had to order more glue. I can't believe how fast I went through these these glue sticks that my friend Kim sent me. Um, I guess I've been doing a lot of work. And these I go through real fast because they're the short ones. I'm still using them, but I'm almost out. So I did buy a package. I bought the cheaper ones this time just because I had to save a little bit of money. So... Um, I do prefer these ones that Kim sent me, the Gorilla Glue. I just feel like it holds the best. And so sometimes when I use the less expensive ones, I worry that they're not going to be the best. But I have found some of the less, ex less expensive ones to be just as good. Um, but then I never remember which ones it was when I go to order again. And I do still love the Gorilla Glue Sticks. In my opinion, they, they are the best. Oh, you guys, I always have such a hard time with this stuff once I get around to all of the embellishing. Okay, so let's see here. We've got our flowers. This is going on the top. This is going on the top. So we know those are top flowers. 
and I think I want to put maybe I want to go with one blue one down here and get these blue ones these two at the top oh I've got I've got another one Okay, let's see. If we go that. That looks really pretty. Okay. Well, you guys, I think I just need to sort of go for it because otherwise I'm just not going to make any decisions and we could sit here all day waiting for me to decide what I want to do. And I can see right here where I got a little bit of that liquid on here. And I'm gonna, I am gonna have to go over this with resin one more time, which is fine by me. And um, get that all nice and shiny again. I'm gonna go with this right here. And then I know I had just threw all this stuff out of the oh I forgot about this this is what we're gonna use ah ha ha I found it Gail sent me this a while back in some happy mail and this is what I want to use for sure decision made and that's gonna go around the edges um, but I want to take a look here I've got a bumblebee, which could go in there somewhere. I've got my beautiful, beautiful butterflies. And these two are sort of matching butterflies, which would go really pretty there. So I've got a lot of options here, you guys, for things that I can throw in to really make this beautiful. I just need to decide how I want to put the big uh, flowers on here and then I would like to add some smaller uh, flowers as well. I'm not sure what I have here. I have one little blue one that would actually go probably pretty nice right there. don't have much in the way of blue flowers right now. I think I've been, I kind of had been using them on a few things. These, these are paper flowers that I got from Kiki's. Um, just not sure if this is too bright. Um, oh, you guys. Let's see. Well, here's what we're going to do. First things first, I'm going to start putting this trim around the this section right here. I'm going to start it right there in the middle and pull it around. So, first things first, I'm going to put some glue right there and get that laid in there
and I'm going to pull it nice and tight. So that it lays down nice and flat. So I want to make sure I'm putting this on there straight. Go ahead and cut this. What did I do with my scissors? Oh my goodness. Oh, I dropped them, that's right. Oh. I'm gonna pull that and I'm gonna trim that right there. And I have a nice little piece of this left for another project. <laughs> I love, love, love this ribbon. I think it is just so pretty. And go almost to the end there. Try and get it even with the other side. Let's pull this back. Melt that. And time for more glue. You can see how fast these tiny glue sticks go. Okay. This little edge glued down. Okay, so there we go. Does that look off? It looks off. Oh my goodness. I don't want it to be off, especially not in the front like that. And you can see I just pulled part of the box off. There we go. Let's see. I think it looks more off in the camera than it does with me looking straight at it. So let me just hold this so that I can see it. Gosh! Now I'm messing up everything. about there. That's where I need it to go. Right there. Okay. All right, let's start getting some of these flowers in here where we want them to go. I think I'm going to put this one down here. Just like that, and just kind of squish it in there with the other ones. 
and you can see how nice that goes with that trim. And then what we'll do is maybe place some of this pretty Venice lace sort of like right oh I like that right there alright we're going to put that right there Uh oh, that piece needs to go up just a tad. Just like that. We don't want to cover up her hairdo or anything. Okay. And then maybe we'll put that flower down there. And this is just a teeny little rosebud I made from a little piece of remnant fabric that I had laying around that I didn't want to waste. Oh, let's see. I'm going to put this butterfly right there I know I want a bumblebee on here somewhere, but I don't know if that's where I want it to be. And I'm thinking I might like to put a little piece of, that's kind of too big, a little piece of lace not that. Maybe we need another piece of this Sorry, you guys, I'm just cutting this little piece of lace off. Maybe a little piece of that lace over on this side as well. And it needs to go that way. Maybe down a little bit. Like that. So that we've got one piece sort of up here and one piece sort of down here and that way we don't have that seam line right there from the trim. So let's get that on there. And it goes into the photo a little bit but that's okay because it's not covering up anything really important. And then maybe we'll do this butterfly right there in the center of that one. That looks really pretty. I'm just going to show you guys this one. I'm going to pull the tongue depressors off of just like that so we've got this one and honestly what I could do is I can take this and look at this what a great idea I can just tear this 
and really give it that whole vintagey vibe with the torn paper. This edge, I don't know that I'm going to be able to tear real well because it's got resin right there. I'll tear the rest of this out here. So you can see I'm just tearing it right along that resin line. Just like that. And then just on this one edge is where I can't really tear it. I want to get my other scissors. Where are they? Here they are. And try and snip this to make it look a little bit more So there's how that one looks, and it really is quite cool. And I can use that, I could use it on the top of this. I can use it on something else, which is probably what I will do. But you can see that I actually wished I had done that on the other one, because I think I would have gotten, but see, you can see this one's nice and flat. So, probably the better way of doing it with the resin is to just keep your image on the full-size piece of paper, resin over the part of the image that you want to use, whether it be just an oval shape or what have you, and um, glue it down with a couple of popsicle sticks, and this is what the back looks like. And there's the front. And look at how cool that would look on any project. She's definitely going to be used very soon. Maybe I need to sell some of these. Do some resin uh, images and sell those um, to you guys so that you guys can use those as, as parts of your projects and things. I'm thinking maybe what I can do, since I've got that ribbon down here, I might just have to use a piece of this at the top of the box to finish it off. I've got this beautiful bow, and maybe I could take the two somehow, or maybe not use that bow this time, but take this and just ruffle it up, and put some of our flowers around it and we, we're going to have a beautiful beautiful box top so but anyway this is what our side looks like so far now I want to add a little bit of bling of course we got to have our bling just need to just kind of decide where I want it to go. I've got this pretty piece that I can... I don't want to put too much in this inside section because I don't want it to cover up the image. So if I used that, and I have these beautiful pearls that I got from um, Deanna, and they have... I don't know if you can see it real well, but it has like a lacy print around it. And I thought that would be pretty on here. Somewhere just kind of popped, popped in. And that goes good right there. I'm gonna make the decision on that one, although now I'm not gonna be able to grab it good and it's burning my finger. bit of frayed fabric right there that I don't want. There's that. Ooh, 
Ooh, that looks really pretty. Okay, so we're going to glue this. And this came from Kiki Sale. You guys, she's got gorgeous, gorgeous bling over there. You need to go over there and do some shopping over at Kiki's because Debbie's got some really great prices. And some of the prettiest bling and flowers and things that you're going to find at a reasonable price. A lot of the flowers she sells you can find other places but she really is reasonable with her prices as well. So, um, And like I've told you guys before she's a very dear friend of mine and I trust her with my own life and I think that you will not be disappointed if you do some shopping over at Kiki's. I really don't think that you would be disappointed at all. I'm trying to see if I add some of this dark blue in there, it will kind of bring both shades of blue out. And I know I've got. I could throw a little slice of gold in there too. I know I've got two of these little blue, here's the other one, I've got two of these little blue bits and I think I'm going to use both of them. This one we're going to put right here, just like that, and I'm going to hold it down so it'll stay. And the other one, I think I want the other one. I'm just trying to decide if it looks okay by itself right there, or if I need something for it to to go with. Um, part of me feels like I need to get some kind of flower up here too, but I don't want to overdo it. And these flowers are a little bit big some of them. Um, just looking to see if I have some other ones that are smaller. Uh, I don't think I want that one, no. Okay, let's use this white. This is a paper rose that I got from Kiki's. I found out that I need to be pronouncing Kiki's a little bit stronger than I have been because people are getting confused as to what I'm saying. And I get it because I've watched a couple of my videos and thought, oh, I can't even understand me. So, I need to start pronouncing that a little bit more clearly so you guys can understand what I'm saying because it's a bummer if you can't get over there because I didn't make it clear as to what I'm saying. So I'm wanting to put another little piece of lace somewhere. Maybe right here. That just takes it over the top there, but that's not too bad right there. Yeah, I think we'll go ahead. I either wanted to add that or to add another butterfly somewhere.
Maybe we'll pop that in right there. I feel like that little pop of gold looks really nice on there. That is just... Ah, we're going to put that right there. I feel like I want to put this one more pop of this dark blue bling, but I was having trouble finding a spot that I thought it looked good in. And I do like that little pop of gold in there. Maybe that with a little white flower. I don't think we need the flower. think that's it for this section of the box. I think it's beautiful and I love the way that part turned out. So now it's time to get to the top of this thing. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my bow or my ribbon, figure out how I want to place it so that it looks good and actually what I think I need to do I think I need to pop the ro the flowers on first I'm gonna see something real quick see this is where an image gets hard to work with on the top of a box if you want to make a, a nice big display of flowers and things it makes it really hard if you've got that image that you're trying to work around and that's why I decided to put that image on the side rather than the top of the box and I'm, I'm glad I did that that looks very pretty and then if I take this I just need to figure out how I'm going to glue this to make it come out nice. So if I've got three, I feel like it needs to kind of come out the middle somehow, sort of. This is harder than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> okay, so if I go like that, that only gives me two loops on one side and one loop on the other. So I've got to, I've got to do this this way. And actually, I think I'm not going to have really much of a, a tail popping out on these. Okay, so let's see here. We've got this ribbon. There's not much done with it. I was, I was struggling with this one, you guys. Um, I'm going to take this and just kind of fold it over in the middle. And I'm going to pop it right there. Just like that. And I can see that my edges are not equal in length. That's okay. I'm going to pop this flower over here. 
And of course, I ran out of glue again. Okay, so we're going to pop this rose right here. And this big rose is going right here. Right there. I'm going to try and fluff this ribbon out. And then this rose is going right there. Putting lots of glue on these flowers so that they're going to stick down really well. Okay. I'm going to pop that one in there. have a little bit of glue ooze out right there, but that's okay because I've got something going in that spot, so we're all right there. And this one I need to just cut off the tail. And she's going to go right there. I think I want to put this one maybe right there. just feel like this ribbon just didn't quite get it where I wanted it to be. And I feel like I kind of messed up with that. It just isn't showing up enough. Because the loops aren't long enough. <laughs> okay. So let's see, do we want another flower in there? And then I've got this beautiful mother of pearl piece that I want to put in here somewhere. I was thinking I was going to put it there, but that's kind of in the back of the box, but that's okay because it still shows up really well right there. And then, where is she? There she is. I want this B to go on there. And this butterfly needs a little bit of bling on it. And I'm thinking maybe one of these, if I can find my nippers. Oh, you guys, I'm so sorry. This is going to be longer video than I anticipated. Oh my goodness, the strings. Okay, so I got a little bit of bling in the middle of that butterfly. I 
definitely want her to go in here somewhere. Ooh, I like the bee right there. And we need more glue. You guys, I'm terribly sorry for the length of this video. I just seem to be getting longer and longer with these things. Maybe I'm just trying to get too much into them, but I want to show you guys the whole project, and I don't want to cut corners on my projects. So I'm making long videos. Because if I cut corners on my projects, then I am selling them and they're not, they're either not what I wanted them to be or I add to them after the video so that I can make them what I anticipated them to be. And this, I want this to go towards the front, so we're going to find another little piece of bling to go in the back there. I want this one right there. And maybe I've got one of these flowers. I wonder what that would be like kind of tucked in there. That looks pretty. That's what we're going to do. Which side is the top? Okay. I'm just going to take this. And I'm going to take a tongue depressor so that I don't burn my fingers. And I'm just going to shove that in there like that so that it ruffles up and looks pretty. There we go. Okay, so now the only thing that we have left to do is to put our trim around the top of the box and figure out what that needs to look like. Let's look at this for a second. That is very, very pretty. And that puts a little bit of ruffle in the in the piece. Or let me look at this one more time. That makes it match all the way around. Okay, I think we're going to go ahead and we're going to go with this because I think it's going to make the whole piece look really gorgeous. I'm trying to see, do I need another flower for the top of this somewhere? I feel like I need to build it up a little bit, just a little bit. I don't care for that one. Ugh. Okay, let's get this on here first. We're going to start in the front. Right here. And we're just going to go along the top part of the lid. Sorry about the dogs. The neighborhood dogs are barking. Mail carrier is probably going around. It's so funny. Some of these dogs in the neighborhood, boy, do they bark all the time. And then we've got other ones like mine. My dog only barks when somebody comes to our door or when we come home to greet us. She barks. <laughs> she howls. I should put a little, I did a little video clip because um, last week one day when Jeff left, he, he takes her sometimes when he goes out and about. When I'm not home and I'm at work, he'll take her out with him for a little ride in his truck and she loves it. She absolutely loves to go for rides in the car. And one day last week, he went with um, his daughter for a little ride. And I was home, so he didn't take her. 
well, he couldn't take her where he was going. So either way, he couldn't have taken her. But she howled and she howled for a good 10 minutes solid just crying and it was so sad and so I was so sad for her because she wanted to go so bad and he left her home and she was just devastated because now she's gotten to the point where she feels like she should be able to go with him every time he leaves the house. She doesn't understand that she can't always go. Although, I don't know how it is in the parts of the countries where you guys live, but here, something happened. When COVID came about, something happened to everyone, and now suddenly, everybody takes their dogs everywhere. They even take them shopping in department stores, and it's not just, you don't just take dogs to the, the pet store anymore. You take them to the grocery store, you take them to the department stores when you go clothing shopping, you take them everywhere you go. It's the weirdest thing. And I, I just, I don't know what happened. I don't know when this, what made it so you're allowed to do that because before COVID, you weren't allowed to take a dog into a store of any kind because people worried about, you know, people having allergies and things like that. So you just didn't take a, a pet just anywhere you wanted to. But now, I mean, it just, nothing changed, no laws changed or anything, but people just started taking them and nobody says anything. So it's like, okay, take your dog to the store day. <laughs> so, which doesn't bother me. I love dogs. I love animals and of course, it doesn't bother me at all, but for some people, I would imagine it's a little frustrating because of allergies and things like that. So, I don't know. I don't know how or when that happened or why, but it did. Um, so now you get to see dogs everywhere you go. Okay, so I think, you guys... For the most part, we've got this done. The only thing that I want to add is a little bit of stickles, and I have to find it. Okay, so let's get a little bit of stickles on here in a couple of places. And I'm going to resin the center of this again uh, off camera. And um, this is going to be it, and I'm just adding just a small amount of stickles in a couple of spots, just around here a little bit to kind of add a little bit of sparkle, and this is just gold stickles to bring out a little pop of gold here and there. We've got some silver and we've got some gold. And I think that is a nice combination. And with this image, the gold really kind of makes it pop. So that's why I wanted to put gold stickles in here. I'm going to go right in the center of that flower and then maybe on the little dots. And these little dots. and some of these. And then we'll put a little bit on the top here and there, not too much. That looks beautiful. A little bit up here. Okay, and then a little bit on these because they are the same as the ones hanging at the bottom, or on the side, I should say. So we'll get those dots. And then, let's see, the bumblebee already has some stickles on it, so I'm just 
just going to get some of this lacy stuff that's popping out just a little bit just to kind of make it pop a little bit and honestly the gold is the only one I could find because I've been trying to clean up in my craft room again and of course when I whenever I do that I end up putting places and putting things places and then forgetting where I put them so I've got a lot to go through to to find them so we're going with the gold and actually I'm glad I'm glad I did because it really looks nice there it just adds that pop of gold that it didn't have before and it really looks quite nice I missed that one okay so that's it for the stickles we've got it all laced up I have one other thing that I want to put on here a little bit of my pearls because I think these kind of finish off any project like this, especially on a, a beautiful box like this. I love, love, love adding these um, stringed pearls. And they've got the, it's got the bigger and little pearls in it. So we're just going to take this and kind of do like that and just kind of round it out. Let's see. Like. Well, I want it longer than that, so kind of like that. So that we have a couple of loops and then a little piece just kind of sticking out there. And we'll find a nice spot to put it in. We're going to put some right in here. Oops, I'm sorry about my head. So we've got some there. And let's get another, maybe a little bit bigger piece, like this. And one of the things I like to do with this as well is to take, and I think I'll put a little bit of glue on that pearl, and we'll pop it in right there where those other ones are. And then I like to take it and just kind of go around and glue it down in certain little spots. Glue one down right there. Gives it a place to kind of rest. And then bring it up here and maybe pop a pearl right there. Glue it down. And then we'll glue this one in right there. And let's see if I can get this off of here. It wants to tangle up right here at the end. There we go. And again, we'll take a nice long piece. We're going to pop the big pearl right where we left off. And come around this way. Like this. Maybe put that one down right there. lifted it too fast. Trying to be careful too so that I don't dip into the stickles while I'm doing this. Okay, and then maybe just kind of bring it in a little bit. Put this pearl right by the bee, right there. To bring this up through the center here and we'll pop that last pearl in right there right under the bee
there that looks really really nice just like that just adds that bit of pearls and things that are kind of popping up on the top and look at the front how beautiful beautiful this turned out and push some of this stuff aside I want to keep her safe there we go and that is what it looks like and maybe if I can back off a little bit you guys can see it even better so that's our beautiful box there's the lid it's got the bumblebee and all those beautiful flowers and laces around it I think this turned out really really gorgeous I'm really really happy with um, with how this turned out so um, this will be coming up available in my Etsy shop I may do a couple of finishing touches on it as I see fit one thing I am going to do is to add resin to this right now and then I will cure that up and um, for the most part it is done you guys so um, this is what the inside looks like it's just a little checkered pattern but it looks very nice and voila there's our box and hopefully you can see it's got um, a little butterfly right there and all the pretty bling on there and then all of the nice butterflies and things that are around the image here it just turned out phenomenal I think um, this is going to be one of my favorite boxes I think and so um, again you guys thank you so much for watching I'm sorry for the length of this video I truly truly am I just don't know how to cut them short um, when I want to make sure that I get everything in that you guys should see I'm going to do my best to try and do a little bit of editing on this and see what I can do to shorten it but if I can't my apologies you guys uh, <laughs> I did my best that would have been pretty on this one too I didn't even think it had a blue stone in the middle of it but that's okay um, okay you guys so um, I hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful day. Have a blessed uh, weekend and um, take care of yourselves. Be safe, be well, and God bless you all. And thanks again for watching. If you're not subscribed to my channel, it would be great if you would hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you'll get notified when I do future videos. And... Um, leave a comment down below. Also remember down in the description box I'm going to put the link for uh, the resin that I used in this video and um, for a couple of the other uh, groups that I belong to. Um, Kiki Sale, that link will be in the description box and um, Fava of Four if you feel interested and you want to go over and visit her channel. She's a very nice lady who does uh, she doesn't do a lot of videos, but she does do videos and, and shows off some of the things that she's bought and done. And um, so that's it, you guys. Have a great day. God bless you all. Take care and stay tuned for pictures on the back end. Bye-bye.